From the top. <laughs> Hello, I'm Joe Barry Carroll. Three words. Why not me? I'm saying that out loud sometimes even to take inventory on, is there a true barrier to me not doing this thing that appeals to me? And then you go about exploring it. Someone in Arkansas made that quilt for my father, and when he passed away in 1968, I was about to be 10, and I just happened upon it, and they were about to toss it, and I just picked it up as a 10-year-old and took it to my mother's home, and it's been with me ever since, and it's tattered because I've traveled with it from Pine Bluff to Denver to Indiana when I went to Purdue to San Francisco when I played with the Warriors. It's been like a little binky almost for me every place I go but it's, it's real important. Five rows over, five rows down. It's beautiful and a great testament to what lies within people. Initially, basketball was something to do. It's free, it only requires a ball. But over time, you start seeing people you compete against that they're going to college and the college is being paid for because they're playing basketball. That's a wonderful combination. And so I thought maybe I could do it. I mean, I kind of knew it, but uh, when I began to play with the older guys and guys who had even had careers professionally, and I said to myself, I can do that. First time I was traded, I must have been looking off into the yonder like, what the hell's coming next? You know, because you, you play for one team for all those years and then toward the end of your career, you bounce around a little bit. Jerome Whitehead, he's uh, the late Jerome Whitehead. That's why I'm very specific about saying his name. I want to honor him. And he said to me, you just got to remember wherever you go, try to add something. And that was, I just thought that was so great. It was a simple thing. It didn't, it wasn't a long discussion. He, he may have said it in just that brief of a time that I just said that. There's a piece that I painted called Pearl. She's leaning forward with a box like this, offering that forward. And what is our gift? We're spending time, oftentimes, trying to figure out what is our gift? What are we bringing to a space that did not exist without us? Or that we're adding to what already exists? But I think making a contribution wherever I go is really important to me. I help young athletes and entertainers and high net worth individuals manage their investments. I experienced things myself that I felt would be helpful for guys. And now, after 20 years of doing it, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, they, it really works. And it's, it's gratifying to me. Money just solves the things that money can solve. If you don't have a car and you need a car, you can buy a car with money. But at some point, it's just gonna be a car. Same thing with a home or anything else. And I think that sometimes we overestimate what that money's gonna do. Like if someone is nice, it'll put them in a position of leverage to where they can do more nice things and make the world nicer. If they're horrible people, they're just gonna be horrible. There's a Van Gogh painting that inspired me. I wasn't trying to duplicate it, but it was an inspiration. So it has many of the elements and I did it. And then I'm sharing it with a friend and he didn't see Van Gogh. All he saw was what he referred to as two people wrestling on concrete. And I thought that was beautiful because it's an illustration of how there's room for everybody and their opinion. I did not study art. My uh, college diploma is in economics, but I can study art. I mean, they're all, there's just as much information as your uh, calendar will allow for you to explore art, artists, what they did, how they came through, what their stories are. And you begin to just compare that to where you are and the possibility that, you know, maybe this is something that you can do. Because I'm really most concerned with doing a thing well. In my studio, you know, half of it is all junked up with paint and brushes and uh, drop cloths and things like that. And I'm often on the other side of that room doing something. There's something there right now. 
there's wet paint in my, in my studio right now, so there's always something. When you play professional basketball, people are gonna write about you. If you have a public life, period, people gonna write about you. And I thought, everybody's talking about me except for me. And so that was kind of my initiation into writing. This was the first time that I wrote about myself. A lot of my storytelling may come from even just when I was a little boy with my father. You may or may not have had a television, and we did not, we had a radio, but my father was a storyteller, and he spoke in dialect. And I was fascinated by this man who was just bigger than life to me, so anything he said was gonna pretty much capture me. But he would just tell these stories, and I was just fascinated that somebody could, you know, just by the way they were telling a simple story about a foot race with a rabbit or something, you know, something, something silly, but it was something magical about it only to grow up here all these years later and know that it's mythology and why we're drawn to any storytelling is that it, it, it offers us a promise of some sort. I want to help. As you get older and you have resources, maybe you share those resources. Money has its limits in a personal life. So why not allocate some of that to change the world? The trick is finding out how do you do that? <laughs> you know, the idea is not debatable, but the real magic to that is how do you do that? And that's something that I think I'll spend the rest of my life trying to figure out. In recent years, I've worked with George Ennison's project, the uh, ACLU, different groups around town, local because I like to see the work, because it just breaks my heart to know that men and women are in prison for crimes that they did not commit. None of us are spared, but it's particularly pronounced with poor people and poor people of color. If I participate in hiring a lawyer, then I can talk to the lawyer and they can tell me about it. We go to the exoneration when it's formalized with the judge saying, you know, go and live the rest of your life as you can. That's exciting. We basically pick up where we were and move forward. We don't start all over. And that's what quilts are. Quilts are this accumulation of fabric that has all this different history. And I look at the pieces of my life sometimes as coming together to form whatever this is now. I do feel that all these pieces come together and become the quilt of my life. If you sit for a moment, and be still, you'll, you'll recognize it in your own life. I don't, I don't know your full history, your family history, but those pieces, those dots are connecting for you. It's an event when they come together because you can see the connective tissue. You can feel it.